Hey guys, Deus. Been coaching for eight years. Former LCS coach. Going to be doing a coaching session with Challenger Support. Uh, introduce yourself really quickly. Hello, I'm Phantom Star. I've been playing for ten years now. Okay, awesome. So usually I start my sessions off with the same questions. Uh, my first question would just be, uh, what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve out of this coaching session? I want to work on my macro decisions, mostly. Okay. Just being aware of uh, when I should link up with my jungle more. Okay. So the way I like to do my coaching sessions is I'm going to be asking a lot of questions, right? So my first question is, when yep. you say, I want to work on macro decision making, what do you think are the macro decisions that you as support have to make in game? And I want you to break it down between early game decision making, mid game decision making, and then honestly, mid, a little bit mid to late. So, I would say what's for early game, it's rotations to help out the jungler, like either at Skoto Crab or in Fade, uh, to help my mid laner crash a wave. And very rarely, sometimes, occasionally, I can find a window top after like a three wave crash bot to help my top laner with his wave if no one else on the team can help him. I got this is great. What I want to do now is I want to explore your thought process behind the decisions making these plays, and then we're going to go watch the VOD. Um, I'm assuming you don't want me to talk too much about the landing phase, right? Uh, yeah, I generally understand the gist of landing phase most of the time. Okay. Perfect. So I'm not going to look too much at the landing phase, just going to go skip to your decision making off base typically. And then let's get started. So early game, uh, when to rotate? Well, how do you know when to rotate in game? Generally when an objective is spawning or when, I, when I'm when i FKing to like my soul laners and seeing like potential like three ways coming in. And just need, needing to be there to cover them. Okay. But to precisely pinpoint it, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. So let's right here. Not sure. What about when do you deploy mid? Deploy mid. When I always, I normally just do this by instinct. I deploy mid mm -hmm. uh, to see if there's any opportunities uh, around around my mid lane or my jungle. Mm -hmm. And then if there isn't anything by the time of the halfway point, I, I just start going back to bot lane. But generally, I can deploy mid when I have like tempo advantage on the enemy support from a, like two or three wave crash, and knowing that I don't need to be bot for around, let's say, like 45 seconds. Okay. Uh, it's a rare, rare occasion. Bot lane is fun. Okay. So let's watch. Um, I will mention like some small stuff that I think is important to comp. So, like, right here, I already noticed this, but uh, in your level right. one, it's like really important for you to actually like walk like this. The reason why is because um, if you don't mark your spot, because even if you're afraid, you can walk here and then walk back. Like they're not going to get you unless they flash yeah. on you. Uh, it's because right now this support, he's going to walk here. He's going to be like, oh, Alistar's in my A by, by the way, guys. So he's just going to walk into the bush. Right. So and I should just walk in the line brush or like near it? Uh, just walk right here to the entrance of river. Because then right you'll, see, right. you'll see them, right? If you don't see anyone, then you get to take the bush. Got it. So that's one thing. Just gonna continue. So I mean, obviously this is sus because like a little little rail shenanigans. She can hop over the wall. I'm just gonna skip past all of this. Yeah. And, uh, get just wraps behind me. So right here, this is your first decision. So when this wave is building in. Yeah. What do I want to do with this timer? Yeah. Exactly. So what are you thinking in your head? And what are the options? Am I thinking? My top's on reset. But I don't, I don't know accurately what his wave state looks like. And my mid has priority for a short tempo to get a ward. And my jungle's all the way on the other side of the map. So I think most of the time, it's just like a standard base. Cover mid one time and then walk back bot. Or I can let my ADC 3 wave crash if I think their champions are capable of like slamming the wave and then hold wave 4. But I, I don't think they can destroy the wave that quickly. So I'm most likely... I, I think I should just go mid here. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just like add some extra nuance, right? Um, you can either choose to hover on this side so you can run mid. Or yeah. you can do what you're doing, which is you could sit here and then you could actually base early. So what is the difference between the two? Uh, the difference from this is that it's like very clear that you're moving into mid. The difference here is that they don't actually know where you are. Right? Yeah. So that's what I'm immediately thinking. I'm thinking, I'm like going, okay, uh, can you crash this way by yourself? If so, I'm going to base right now. And then you just base right now. 
Yeah, because you don't need to do any of this. I don't need to hit this. Guys have got it unlocked. Right. And then you're basing. You see, it's like very clear that you're just showing your rotation. And then what could have happened instead is you could have just like been already here. Now, what are the cons? Yeah. Obviously, the cons is that while you're doing this, they could try like potentially holding the wave. Yeah. Which, I mean, this is like, this isn't even good by them, to be completely honest with you. They lost so many conditions off of holding this. So much HP gone. Yeah, this is like, not very good. So, yeah. what's up? Oh, I was just going to say, so I just have to say and then crash this one. Yeah, this is completely fine. This is what they did. Yeah. You use your timer to get a ward. And then we get an invid. This is a bad fight. We don't see their bot lane on vision. Well, we know we know exactly where their bot lane is. Yeah. They should just be on the right and fog. Yeah. So, self-explanatory. Don't need to go like too deep into it. I'm not going to care too much about the mechanics. Like, do whatever. Okay. First base. Let's check it out. So, when you're leaving out of this base, this is a really important discussion we're about to have. Um, you're going to deploy mid because that's your instinct, right? Yes. And you know right now that uh, your tempo with Rel is about the same. So what I want to do instead, and what I want you to do, is I want you to create a mental checklist of the conditions that you're going to think of in order to come to your conclusion. So I said a lot of words. It's going to be really easy once you look at it. So the question oh, yeah. we're trying to answer is, do I go mid or bot? What is the highest priority as a support? I'm just going to give you the answer. All right, bot lane? Yeah, so your ADC. Does your ADC need help? Yes or no? That's the first question you always ask. If it's ask. no, then I can go mid. Well, not not just yet. We have to be, we got to go a bit deeper into this. But yeah, first, okay. yes or no? Does your support, does your ADC need help? No. Okay. If it's no, equals consider going mid. Right? Okay, now we're going to go deeper. Is there yep. a play mid? What constitutes as a play? A good setup. Like, when the Jace's wave is on my set height of the map or so, when my jungle is nearby so like you said gank right because that's what you're explaining there's a gank what other what else other yes. than ganks can a support do drop vision in the in the enemy jungle like okay. on the way back to bot vision and i'll put one more and that's wave when we think about getting a gank right we're going to put in the conditions in there so what are the good conditions to a gank no sums that's a great condition i'm already thinking about that if i want to deploy mid uh what other conditions yeah. are there um wave in a bad spot we're going to go look at vision now what are we thinking about for vision? Enemy wards, right? Because you got a pink. So right now you're thinking like, okay, are there wards mid lane? And you're going to ask your mid laner as you're walking in the base, does this guy have wards? And you can go clear it. And then obviously wards that you can drop. Now, this wave one is really important. Let's say Orianna needs the base. You've seen those comp plays, right? Where the enemy support holds the way for them. Yes. So Orianna has a timer to reset and then come back without needing TP. Yep, and not just that, let's say your mid laner needs help crashing the world. That's another example. Yeah. So let me say, just uh, base timers, crashing waves. And then I'm going to tell you like the super cheat code to all of this, because this is a lot of information, right? You don't want to be thinking of all of this. These are just information that you already know subconsciously. It's this one right here. Am I walking with a wave? Now, why do you think this matters? If I'm walking with a wave, the enemy will more likely be there to last at the wave. Yeah, like exactly. They can't drop the resources of the wave. Exactly. So I'm matching the timer when the enemy should be there. Mm -hmm. When the waves meet, there's going to be action, right? Opposing laners are going to fight for the control. And then, I mean, you yes. have like options. Like if, you're, if your mid laner gets prior, okay, then you go get wards. If they trade, then you're there to gank. If the guy doesn't get prior, well, he's just going to fight him instead of using his spells on the wave. And you're there for all of us. So lots of stuff really here. I'm going to be you, and I'm going to go through this quickly. I'm deploying. Does my ADC need me? No. Is there a play mid? No. Okay, I go bot. Got it. You see? Just like that. Just like that. Because when you deploy, watch what's going to happen when you deploy mid here. Nothing. Pretty much. I only was able to clear this ward because I saw the L coming in for it. Yeah. Like, this, this ward that this guy dropped, obviously it's, like, good to kill. But imagine another situation. If there is no play mid, then where else can there be a play? On bot lane. No play mid equals make a play bot. A bot is always your priority, because you see this wave right here? It's bad. 
It is yeah. not good for them. It's very bad for them. So you could be right here in Pixel right now, and you drop waiting the for them, and you're waiting for them, and you're telling your Skarner, like, by the way, if this guy comes here, I'm ready. I'm ready to party. Right. Which punishes Rel's uh, play for getting the ward. Yeah. I get a positional advantage, and then capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. So, like, what just happened here was, let's look at what you did. Boom. 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 <laughs> like, come on. Very roundabout. Yeah, exactly. Lost a lot of time. Now, we're going to look at this one. When to rotate. You put, you're not really sure. Okay. This one's super easy. Because it's the same checklist for when it comes to when do you deploy Rome. mid. Is your ADC fine? Yes. Okay, then I can yes. move. When? On the timer. So right now, you look at this, it's like, is my ADC fine? Uh, He's okay. So if you want to... He's okay, to, but the wave eventually goes out. So yeah. I have a short time here. Exactly. So... That's why you see at these times, like usually the bot lanes are going to try to play for priority, right? Like holding yep. holding the wave like this is like low-key a little sussy because it just gives the enemy team an option. Unfortunately, their champions are like kind of bad, but they're not like so bad that they can't do it, right? Like Malphite, Shen can hit level 6 and they can dive you guys more, man. So right here, what I'm thinking when I ride bot lane is, okay, are you guys playing for the grubs? My jungler says, yes. I go, okay, my priority get vision on dragon so we know if the, their jungle is cross mapping yep exactly even here like this position that you take like i don't even know why you would go here i think it's just i was just considering fainting pressure but there's nothing i'm pressuring right exactly like there's nothing that you're doing the the only spot so it would have been better to walk up yeah you'd, you'd either go like this to watch them to see where they go, right? Yeah. Or you go like this if you're not afraid of getting one shot by Nico here. You see how that works? So even like when you're doing this right now, it's like, oh, I'm just, I'm actually just gonna go here right now. Yeah. If I go there, they have to be worried about me moving somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Or like coming around them, like trying to flank them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if you if you give me the question, it's like, oh, I'm gonna stand here because I don't want. I'm going to help my, my ADC hold this freeze. Like, okay, this guy's just going to W and Q this from like a billion range. Like, you're going to yeah, stop this? Yeah, it's not realistic. Yeah, exactly. I can't stop it. So when we're looking at this, and it's like, okay, how do I know when to rotate? Well, first, what's the objective you're playing for? Check your ADC condition, and then uh, think about if you can be there. It's like, okay, well, we're playing for grubs. I got to make sure that they're going for this dragon, and I'm going to position myself in a way where I can make it. And then if my bot lane's going to die, then I'll be there on the way of protecting him. All right, he's good. I, he gets dragon. It's like whatever. Okay, we're just gonna continue scrolling this through because I mean nothing's gonna happen because these guys aren't doing anything. I know we didn't want to talk too much about landing, but I'm pretty sure this bad guy should have been dead. That's fine. Okay, crash your wave base. Okay, boom. Is your ADC fine? Yes, the wave is coming in. Their Vagar's though on mana. I should have a timer here. Yeah, is there a play on mid? Uh, I guess the only way my ADC wouldn't be fine is if Shen has ulti right now. Yeah. But but he's, he's fine. You gotta is there play, a play like on that. mid? I'm a little late with the wave, but maybe. Maybe I can make it there. Mm. It's you'll, like, you'll, you'll be behind the I'm wave. I'm not confident you'll... there's a play, but maybe. Yeah, uh, at the very minimum, you can suit vision here. The other alternative option, right, is that uh, your Kais is coming out first. She'll like hold a small freeze, but this guy's like going to base 100% of the time. So I would go. Yeah, back. and then they'll have to fix that wave, yeah. All right, so you go mid, perfect. You see vision, good. One difference here too is that it's like the say is building out; it's not building into you. So this. Yeah. Is... I'm walking in for vision because I know Roll reset later than me. Yep, this is perfect. Uh, kind of shitty ward, ward here instead. Got it. It's because uh, like the guy can walk like that, you know. Yeah, and then we don't see it. Let's see the play here. What? Small execution, but like... It was a bad, <laughs> very bad basket. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. We would have gotten another kill, but yeah. All right, that's it for the early game. Hope you liked the vid. If you want to see part two, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, join my Discord down below and my Patreon if you want to get some great coaching. I got a sweet deal for my coaching right now. We're talking... 
$5 for one free sesh for that Patreon.